Hello, everybody. We've got a great turnout here from the Mo Brain Trust meeting. It's, it's meeting number five in terms of official meetings like this for the whole team. Today is Tuesday, November 5th. It's the Tuesday after the Home Business Summit, which just ended here in San Diego, California, coincidentally. So we're going to talk about uh, that event. We're going to talk about our participation and and a uh, post-mortem of that event a little bit, get a couple of people to give some testimonials about their experience there, and then we'll talk about follow-ups from that event and for the week ahead. So here is the Fabiana can't hear. Are you the only one that can't hear? I can now. Excellente. Welcome, Fabiana. So you didn't miss too much. I was just saying that this is our agenda. We're going to talk about the Home Business Summit. We're going to hear a couple from a couple people that were there who we have not selected yet, except Peter. So we'll start with Peter. And then we'll talk about follow-ups. We'll talk about the plan for the week ahead, aside from those follow-ups, which includes the things that we haven't done yet, getting our teams organized. You know, We're so consumed with the Home Business Summit that that, that did not happen yet. Uh, same with getting our co-op clicks going. We're ready to go. That's why Alina was following up with everybody yesterday, and uh, and any other follow-ups. And then I'll talk. I want to talk about a free method. Um, and for anybody that's here at the end of the meeting, I'm going to talk about. I'm going to go over these three secrets. Let's see where they are. These three secrets, and I'm not going to record that part. So definitely want people to be here. And then we'll talk about a time for the next meeting. I mean, we'll do this stuff before, and then we'll turn off the recording, and then we'll talk about those things. So time for the next meeting, supercharged seminar announcement. The date was announced at this event. And that, uh, and then a time, any time for q and I'm happy to stick around, but we, we do want to get everybody off within an hour, everybody that has to go within an hour or less. That would be the goal. So with that agenda, um, Let's get started. So um, why don't we do the testimonials, and then I'll talk about the data a little bit. But I don't want to bore everybody with the data. What I want to just give here in this meeting is kind of an overview, uh, show some of the screens, some, of, some screenshots of, I mean, not screenshots. I'll, I'll share my screen and show you the data and what I'm doing to, anal to compile it, and then the tech team will ultimately have a bigger role in that whole process because this is just the first time we're going to need to do this every time. So this is this is going to be a good learning experience, but I have a pretty good idea of what needs to be done. It's not so different from doing any kind of analysis. It's just a matter of knowing where the data is and then knowing how to work with the data so that you get the right information out of it so that you can use that to make improvements the next time around. So Peter. Are you, let me see if I can unmute Peter and see what he has to say about the Home Business Summit. Let's see if anybody else on, actually it's just me and Peter here so far, so, um, that we're there. So I guess he's going to have to, he's going to have to cover for the, everybody else, and then if you leave anything out, I'll try and touch on it. So you are unmuted, Peter. Hey, how you doing? Excellent. Can you hear me? Or is that too loud or is that too soft or what is that? No, it's perfect. Okay, uh, yeah, I'm wondering, I'm wondering, I saw some pictures there of you with a fellow wearing a Mo Brain Trust shirt who I've never seen before. Who was that? That was probably Bruce Merrifield. Ah, Bruce Merrifield. Way to go uh, introducing us, but um, aside he, from that. He, he was, I think he was busy with, uh, you know, his, he had his girlfriend, but she was also at the other event, but I did not see okay. much of them outside of the uh, classroom. He was at the other event that you briefly attended? No. Oh, he was at a different event. No, he was, at, he was in Cabo San Lucas is what I was saying. And he was also in, uh, apparently, oh. in Fiji. Interesting. Yeah. So he's more or less, he's, he may be working undercover on a, a, something lo much larger than the brain trust. But anyway, <laughs> um, <I think> so. <laughs> that, that must be our assumption going forward. But you know, as we decide what, what and what not to share. But 
Uh, yeah, and the first thing I like to do whenever I go to a, a, an adventure of this sort, uh, get together at an important seminar with uh, the top minds in our business, I usually like to smash my car into as many other cars as I can find. Uh, this time I was only able to find two, but as it turned out, it worked out pretty well because they were both undamaged while my car was nearly totaled. Um, so I arrived at the event a little bit late and somewhat flustered, perhaps is the uh, would be one uh, one word we might uh, consider using. But um, the next uh, over the next couple very, days, was, when when Peter it? called me and he told me that he had been in a car wreck and he was so unnerved about it, I I was very concerned as we all would be and. Um, once I heard that he was okay and nobody was hurt in his car or the other car, then it was, you know, all I wanted to do was just to help him to get back into a good frame of mind because, you know, cars can be replaced so long as nobody's hurt. And, but sometimes when you're in the middle of it, I didn't realize how, how recent the accident had occurred to when I first talked to him about it. Because he seems so calm on the phone, but he wasn't calm at all. But Anyway. No, no, I, I, yeah, and that's that's one thing. I mean, I'm sure most of the people here have learned about me is that I never really get excited about anything. I'm always very low key about everything. So, um, yeah, I was not, I was not the least affected by that incident. But um, your 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 thoughts and care were noted. <laughs> I wasn't actually crying and weeping out loud, but you know, or screaming, which was my other top option. Anyway, uh, yeah, it was uh, it was over pretty quickly, and um, so the the event was cool because um, it wasn't anything like the um, the cowboy event because there weren't you know top people in the world there like seven or eight or nine of them, but there were some top people in the in the, in the industry for sure, and and the, the biggest takeaway is that these people have decided to join and make this opportunity the focus of their business going forward. They have to the exclusion of nearly everything else. Uh, one fella that uh, I'd never really heard of, his, his name is Michael, Michael Force. Michael, I think. Force. Yes, it is. Yeah, yep. now that guy, um, he's a, um, I guess he's a seven-figure a month earner for years and years and years, and basically just him and Matt somehow, he explained the situation, but I forget exactly how it happened, but he's come aboard to um, update, and he's basically come aboard. If you looked at some of the changes to the website, there's a few of them coming, but in the next two or three weeks, the entire website, all the landing pages, all the promotional things, all the testimonials, all the every single thing that, that we use when we look at when we go and see MTTP or MOBE, either of those two sites, every single thing that's in there is completely different, and it's unbelievably um, improved. It's it's amazing, really. I mean, I went and looked at the site today and just looked at trying to be a critical eye and just. You know, it's it is it's pretty nice put together now, but it's but the difference between what it looks like now and the, it's it's like the going from the um, ice age to the uh, <clears throat> to the space age. I mean, it's very you'll see what I mean. Uh, and then the landing pages that they use, you know, there's really only two or three or four different forms that we kind of use till now, and there still are only a few simple ones that they're using. But they're so much more dynamic, so much more attention getting. The graphics are so much more exciting. Um, who took these pictures? These are shit. Sorry. How did you manage to make these pictures look with, uh, so bad? With oh, the iPhone. iPhone. <laughs> without, without a flash. In, in dark light. Uh, you're so cute with your eyes. You're so cute with your eye stuff. <laughs> Just continue. every single thing is Continue on. Stop. I don't want to distract you. Keep All right. On. Okay. All right. Stop sharing my screen. All right. Yeah, you better because this is just sad. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like everything's underwater. That's awesome. Uh, that's I'll, show them how you, I'll show them how you threw my camera on the ground after I begged you not to, but maybe that, we'll go into that another time. Anyway, uh, yeah, each of the, um, they, had, they had a number of uh, the speakers from the core group uh, that, uh, you, that you've probably seen in some of the videos, some of the people who've been in the program for a long time, like Carolina. Um, you know, people who start out basically not knowing anything, and then bing, bang, boom, they're, they know stuff, and they make money. Uh, June, 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 June. <laughs> we talked a little. I talked a little bit with uh, uh, Rob Tepper about um, the June, June evolution. From now, the, the story is that the pitch of June, June is that he somehow was, um, you know, was was birthed at sea by you know a sea otter and, and a, an unnamed other, and then swam to shore and was you know found rolled up in a newspaper on the side of the road or something. It wasn't quite like that, but. Um, he uh, he didn't have any language skills or anything when he got here, and um, and now he's just you know he's actually pretty slick on the stage. It was pretty pretty amazing to see the 
the evolution of um, of Jun Jun. But um, in just one year, amazing. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty amazing. But then he started, you know, the way looks for a little bit longer. He talked about his girlfriend at NYU, and I was like, well, maybe there's a little bit more. To this. Maybe Jun Jun wasn't like an amoeba when he got here, but you know. No, he was uh, a great he, guy. He was going to get an MBA, and he was going to yeah, work exactly. on Wall Street. Yeah. Exactly. So it wasn't as though he was, you know, a monkey and then he became human. He just was a guy who didn't speak English and got into this program, and started making money, a lot of money, really quick. Um, and uh, but the, the thing, that, the takeaway, I think the biggest thing I like about this, and um, I'm actually going to do some videos coming up just for part of my promotional campaign about this, the MTB, MTTB scam and MOPE scam and stuff. Um, I'll explain how those work, but. Uh, my biggest takeaway of these of the are the people here that are in that are at they're at the group people who are part of the group. I mean, these are just some of the nicest people you'll ever meet, and they all are just like us. I mean, they all just want the same thing, you know. And you know, you can call certain Jesus Tepper. All right. Anyway, how did you manage to take the sun out of San Diego? That's amazing. Look, there's a guy. Oh, geez. Okay. There's no need to go any further. Abort. Um, yikes. They're getting better. Anyway, yeah, yeah. You notice how there's color in that photo, just because it was me. Um, yeah, the uh, the takeaway is that is that everybody here is on everybody's side. Everybody's for everybody. There's no there's no competition, inter intra group competition, except for the fact that you know we want to crush everybody else. But you know, besides, we were also helping them too. You know, we picked them up after crushing. You know what I mean? Um, and uh, it's just a, just a really um, a synergistic group because everybody just shares what they know and here's what I did and here's how I did it and here's why I did it and here's what worked here here's what didn't I mean, you know and then you know you have people like you know Terry Lamb and uh, and Chow and uh, you know a couple of the others who have you know been million dollar earners in other businesses and said you know this is this is where it is right here and they've decided that knowing everything so it's pretty easy to to be you know be pretty proud of, of our decisions as as people who don't know everything. To, to see the opportunity and make the decision before we knew everything. So anyway, that's about all I got. It was fun. It was fantastic. And of course, Rob Tepper. What can you say about that guy? Well, that was enlightening. That was good. Um, I agree. Let's see. Anybody else here that was at the event? Let's take a quick look. We do have some more people on the line. Alina's joined us now. And I think uh, everybody else was here, so welcome, Alina. And Alina was in touch with us during the event. So let's see, a couple other things to say about the event. Very down-to-earth people. You know, you saw pictures of me and hanging out with John, Chow, and Terry Lamb, and anybody else that, that stays up late. And they are very un unpretentious. I'm going to mute you, Peter. You have a loud, a loud, loud. Anyway, uh, the people that were there were just very genuine and willing to share and willing to help, and uh, you know, and the leaders are willing to help, and the people that are looking for help, if they're if they are willing to ask questions, uh, there's no rejection. It's just a very loving, warm community, and I think that's one of the things that makes people get involved to the point where you know they, they want to come to the next mastermind they want to go again and again to these events because they're just such a uh, it's a community and the new people that come to the events there weren't nearly enough new people there I guess that's the other thing we should say is that out of there were only about a hundred people I was expecting around 300 and uh, in all of the all of the conversations that I had, I would always talk about a couple hundred people, but there were only 100 people, and of the 100 people, about 90 of them were already licensees, and probably about 30 or 50 were, you know, were either titanium or platinum. So that kind of gets back to what I was saying about it being... <clears throat> A community, the way that Eileen was talking about it in the webinar we did last week. Once you come, you know, you want to keep coming. But really, that's not the purpose. It's it's a huge secondary benefit, and and it leads you to, you know, be comfortable just having one-on-one -on -one conversations with eight-figure earners without thinking twice about it. And you know, it's, there's that mutual respect because you start to know each other. 
really has nothing to do with how much you're making. It has to do with the fact that you're there and you're and you and you care and that you are trying. You know that you're actually getting involved. That's really enough for anybody to give time to you. So I was hanging out late at night since I hang out. As you know, I'm pretty much around. I'm, I'm online until 3 a.m. So for me, being up until 2 or 3 a.m. with everybody was not a big deal. But at this event, because there was only 100 people total, there were probably about 8 to 10 people that were up until late. And those are the pictures that you saw <laughs> among that collection. That was everybody that was left up at the event. When you get to a place like Cabo, there's about, you know, there's 200 people, so there's about twice that many. I think it's kind of similar, you know, 10, 20 percent of the people hang out late at night. But that is such a great time to just, you know, just to see the real side of people. And there's there's no business talk at that time, really. But, you know, that's where you form the relationship that ultimately may lead you to be comfortable or you may even get an idea when you're talking to somebody. Like John Chow shared with I, my son came on Friday night to the event, which was great. It was the first time that he's come, anybody in my family has ever come to an internet marketing event. And although I wasn't able to convince him to, to, to come for Saturday and Sunday, he was there on Friday and he met Matt Lloyd and it was, it was really a, um, uh, it was just so nice to have him be able to see the environment and at the end of the night we were hanging out at the bar with John Chow and he told us one on two his entire story of how he got started way more than I've ever seen or known and it was cool it was really cool so as many of you know when he started in Rome he was already making 40,000 a month on his blog and he also sells products so his other revenue stream brought it above 40,000 a month and in Moab now, he's over oh, the last two months. He's made over a hundred thousand each month. So he loves Moab, and he—you'll see in his videos and things—he comes across being kind of ostentatious sometimes. But it's partly just because he's trying to motivate other people, and because he doesn't care. You know, he's not really trying to impress anybody. But but it's you know, he, when you get to talking to him one on one, and you hear more about him and his life, you see that. It wasn't an overnight success. He's worked hard to get where he's at. He actually only spends 10% of what he makes, and he is one of the most savvy investors that you'll ever meet. And that's why he still lives in Vancouver, BC, rather than in the US, because there's a lot of benefits from the tax side of things. But anyway, just a nice guy willing to share that kind of stuff at the bar at 1 o'clock AM. When you get to the point where you have John Shell money, you definitely want to know. When you have, and, and what he's doing is so simple uh, and, and totally legal, but and it's an option you have in Canada that you don't have in the U.S. So, But that's the kind of stuff that happens when you come to these events that has nothing to do with the classroom. And then you add to, add to that the speakers were just one speaker better than the next. They were just really, really good all the way around. So that is kind of a review. Um, you'll see more in the videos and pictures. and. I shared this, uh, I can share it in, I think, I'll share this link in the chat box so you guys can go to it directly. This is just my pictures and I guess I could put them, could have put them on Facebook, but I've been putting them because Picasa, this tool Picasa interfaces with Google. It just uploads everything to your Google Plus account. So if I go back to the meeting, go to the chat box. That's this link. That's my pictures. Everybody else that has pictures, please share. There were six of us there, which is very cool. Here's we never did get a picture of all of us together, which was unfortunate. But this is Bruce Merrifield, Deborah. First time I met Deborah, actually. So that was nice. And we never got a picture of Eileen in her red shirt. We never got a picture of more than three of us in one place at one time. But we were all there. We had a great time. And I think that all 100 people had a great time. In fact, I'd love to play this one video at the end by this guy named Bob that I took at the very, very end. All right, so we're on to number three, follow-up. Um, the analysis is, is a huge piece. So let me just show you the, what I mean by that. Uh,
here's one piece of it. Let me make sure that Jeff, you're still unmuted, right? No, you're not. Now you are. All right, let me know if there's anything that people are saying in the chat box. But anyway, I just started working on this. So, you know, for, this is basically just extracting the raw data, and this is just looking at clicks. Um, and then on top of that, we'll add on, this is opt-in, so we need to compare this to our autoresponder, but, you know, the numbers are extremely low. And so we got a total of 70 opt-ins out of 400 clicks. Uh, so it's about 20% for an event. Maybe not too terrible. It's, what, 17%? So I'm just working on this. I haven't had a chance to do the whole thing, but it's not, and, and the tech, you know, the, the idea is that our tech team will take over doing all this stuff, but I'm just kind of getting it started. And then the other data that we have is in this, um, let's see, hold on, I have to open another file. Um, this one, one second. So the other data, the most valuable data is here. So we used two different services. We used 90210, which is a five-digit code. And when people call it, we get their phone number so we're able to follow up with them. So from that, we got 24 leads. And of those 24 leads, we followed up with all of them by phone before the event, and most of them have some level of interest. And so that is our most valuable asset at this point. In a minute, I'll tell you how many people actually came to the event, for those of you who don't know, from all this work. But I just want to show you what we've got to work with now. So there's no entries is not accurate anymore. But we had a few of us working on this up until Friday evening. I was actually making calls on Friday until about 7 p.m. right before I packed up and headed over there because I figured if people got the call, you know, spontaneous people might actually come to the event. So we've got all of these, all this information. This is kind of a simplistic contact management. Tool. We have a contact management tool that we'll start using as well. In fact, a couple people have started to, to learn. And then um, this is the other 619222 FAST. And this was advertised on the other radio station, which is called KCBQ. It's the oldest station in San Diego with a you know, not, a, not a huge listener base compared to the popular stations, but it does have business talk radio shows. And this one guy, Stan, um, there's a very good chance that he will get in. So this campaign was less than $1,000. This campaign was $7,000. For the $7,000, we probably have at least 15 good leads to follow up with. If one of them was platinum, you know, it'll be better than break even. So how many people came to the event from all this work? So we, we did the, uh, we, we the $7,000 in radio advertising on three stations. We did, we did $1,000 on this other station. And, and, and all, and for this, this station, they only had the phone number, but it was repeated in a one, one minute long commercial repeated four times. And that commercial was on 11 times a day for a week before the event. And this other ad, so the 90210 is on three stations, $7,000. They also were given the website address, so some of the leads that I showed you before were a result. They also gave us free banner ads on their pages, uh, dynamic ads that would appear when our ads were on the radio, and on and on. I mean, they, they basically threw in stuff that they hoped would help us to be successful. And I was hoping and expecting that, you know, it could yield amazing results in terms of getting people to the event. 
So we did all of that, the 700 flyers that I showed you. Um, I followed up with my personal list just a couple of times. Um, we had a we had an easel outside of a movie theater in a very popular location for a week before the event, and we did the media buying that we only were able to spend less than a thousand dollars, even though we had planned to spend five thousand, and we did Facebook advertising that we we spent about uh, seven hundred and fifty dollars. Again, between those two, we were planning to spend five thousand. So between the two, we spent about fifteen hundred. And what we have is how many people were at the event from all of this work. Oh, there's also Eileen spent a thousand dollars and did a newspaper ad that ran in the Sunday San Diego Union in the A section on page. It happened to be on the top left hand side of page A40. And what else? There were other, you know, other little things, but all in all, it was a pretty significant effort. I'm just trying to communicate that. So, what was the total number of people that were at the event, at the event based on all of that effort? Peter, do you want to answer that question? May I unmute Peter? Give us an elegant answer to that question. Let me let me see if I can sum this up concisely. Um, and and I think we should place it in the larger context. The animal house way. The larger context as well. Um, from all the efforts that you just described and the similar efforts uh, peripherally to that that are a part of those efforts, as well as the Matt Lloyd efforts, which we can assume were rather, how shall we put this, intensive. The entire group. Of new people that enjoyed that enjoyed and learned from the seminar how to change their entire lives and financial future was a sum total of uh, was it zero or was it zero one? point zero? Yeah, zero yeah. Or, or or slightly less. Yeah. So very very interesting. So at this point in time, we could say that it was a total failure, but if we follow up, we could have we could break even. We could make a hundred percent. Return on their money it could be if it could be, you know, five people go platinum. It could be 500 percent return. So the total spent was about nine thousand. One platinum is nine thousand. So the jury is still out. The thing is that there's actually still some follow-up going on from this this nine hundred ninety-five dollar ad here on the six one nine two two fast. It's still on the air, and we've actually had couple of calls today, uh, or we had one call today where somebody listened to the message for a couple of minutes, so that's another follow-up. And now they're not advertising the event anymore, they actually changed the one minute ad, so now it's advertising, making $1,000, $3,000, $5,000 commissions from home, and that will be playing 11 times a day until we got a total of 150 spots at a minute long, and they were only able to deliver about 99 or 88 before the event, so the rest of them are being delivered this week. So if we choose, if we had been ready, we could have started promoting the the uh, the supercharged seminar. But that I you know I didn't think we were ready, and we don't even know if we're going to put any of our co-op advertising into that at all based on this. So we are just finishing this campaign with MTTB. But the point is that the people that heard the campaign, the people that saw the flyers they could potentially now be redirected to MTTB. And so I, I don't think that this was by any means uh, a failure yet. I don't think it was a waste of money. I think that if we don't follow up, it would be. Um, but I'm not going to let this go because, you know, I started this myself for myself because I had, because uh, I live here and I wanted to test it out and now, with these kind of leads, if it was just me, I would be aggressively following up. But we have a team that feels the same way, so we will definitely make sure that we follow up. All right, so let's move on. Rob. Yes. At what point would you consider the experiment a failure? In, in three months. And would you advertise for another event before you had your final results? 
I think that I will definitely be looking into advertising the supercharged seminar, but I won't start two weeks before. Basically, you need to. I'm going to start looking into it now, but I'll keep it outside of this group until we get we get our stand. You know, the rest of our act organized, and I'll just do some research. But you know, the same the same strategies that we learned here could be applied, and if we plan in advance. It might be worth doing flyers. It might be worth like I was at a, a luncheon today, and the uh, the host, I mean the the same guy, Radio Jack, that does the creative guerrilla marketing strategies. He suggested that we could, um, whether it's there or here, or whether it's for the MTTB or whether it's for the for the summit. He suggested that we could actually host a showing of a movie, and basically. I don't. I think we. Ha he said something about minimum of a hundred seats. It's at, at seven dollars a seat. So you pay like a thousand bucks, and you basically have a private screening, and you can give out tickets to that movie, and then you can do a commercial before and or after the movie. He mentioned that there's an event. There's a, a big movie event coming up for the Asian American community. He asked if we have appeal to the Asian American community at all. When I saw him today, I said, "Well, we got." John Chow and Jun Jun Lee. So yeah, I think so. So there's those kind of opportunities, whether it is with the seminar, you know, whether it's with events or whether it's with MTTB, it's basically offline strategies. And I think we need to focus our thirty thousand dollars and you know our David versus Goliath all on online. And with the twenty five people, I'm interested. If there's other people that are interested in continuing to pursue the offline stuff, then I think we should continue to do that and have separate co-operators on a improv basis, you know, for the next few events if there's enough interest. Did that answer your question? Yeah, that, that's fine. I'm just curious what your perspective was. We, we can move on. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I've never done it before. Like I was talking to Drake Jack at this event today. I said nobody would do an eight thousand dollar investment in radio, and so the opportunity here is for us to document this and to make this into a case study. And either way, it will be very valuable because who does this? You know, John Chow might do it for himself, but who does this? By the way, Matt Lloyd knows that we did this, and. Uh, you know his question. He was impressed, but I didn't tell him to impress. I I, I wanted to wait and you know have a hundred people at the event. Then he would have been impressed. But I wasn't trying to impress him when I told him, you know, that we spent money on advertising. But his question, you know, immediately when I told him that we had done radio and he was interested and he asked me, you know, how much we spent. I said around nine thousand. He said, how many leads did you get? And I said. You know, just the ones that we got phone numbers for, it's around 30. And so he quickly did it, the math and said, so like $300 a lead. That's kind of expensive, but they are highly targeted, qualified leads. These are people that heard the ad on the radio and actually took action and, you know, responded. And now we followed up, and several of them have said they're interested. So $300 per lead, not necessarily a terrible book, but it's actually, we got a lot more leads. We got another. 70, right, that opted in that we can follow up with, but all we have for them is email addresses. But hey, we do have the team to be able to follow up with those people as well. And so 30 that we can follow up with on the phone, 70 that we can follow up with. Yeah, yeah, Matt was disappointed that there was only 10 new people. You know, his goal is for everybody that comes to bring somebody new. Absolutely. Okay, so I will definitely share. All of this forensic data, in fact, <laughs> what's his name uh, from Canada who has been doing really well lately, he, he's, all, he's a software developer and he talked about the way that he became interested in Mo was that he did a forensic, he called it a forensic, uh, not forensic analysis, but basically it, it's like reverse engineering. He just looked at the numbers as an engineer would, and he saw that they worked. And then 
he played with real money, and then he proved that it worked. And he just spent the last 30 days in Cabo, and he made like 20 grand while he was in Cabo, just hanging out and learning from that. So it's not too bad. Um, I wanted to just, yeah, so this is the one follow-up, and then that other form that I showed you, which I can't find right now. I might have closed it. It's not so important. And, you know, I'm going to, that kind of stuff will be, the tech team will work on, and we'll, we'll summarize the results for everybody, and then that's the, the empowering part, because you can take those results and you can apply them yourself, or you can put more money in the co-op, or you can share with other people as we have our affiliate program, get other people into our, our future co-ops that, you know, once we have results, we'll definitely be doing that. What his strategy produced? Um, that strategy in terms of marketing, his, his marketing efforts are very, very clear. He has affiliates, and he rewards affiliates for doing the marketing for him. So he didn't do anything, as far as I know. He does not do any offline um, as far as online, you know, I doubt that he did that either. Why would he when he had all these people that you're telling him you're going to give him gold coins to bring in people? He doesn't need to do it himself. So that's what his affiliate program is all about. Um, if well, anybody does differently. Yeah, he does send out emails to people on his list. That's true. He sends out emails. That is true. Uh, don't know. I think that that's where a lot of the people came from, like the guy from Egypt who came and the guy, the people who um, had never been to an event before but had been in, had gotten in recently, they most likely came from Matt's own promotion. But I don't think that there were, well, I don't know. Uh, most everybody that was there, even the new people that were now licensed rights, it was not their first exposure to Matt. They did not come to this event because they clicked on a link about the event. They came to the event because they knew MOB and they were either in at the $49 level or they were thinking about it and they wanted to come and see if it was the real deal. And really across the board, everybody who was not licensed rights, I think, left with licensed rights. And everybody that was licensed rights and wasn't the higher level um, had the opportunity to schedule a consultation with a somebody on the sales team to talk about whether or not it made sense for them to have some kind of financing plan. <laughs> but he didn't he didn't actually even allow anybody to upgrade at the event. He just allowed people to sign up to have this consultation to see. And I know that he's done creative things uh, in the past, you know, thousand, two thousand dollar a month kind of deals for, for these higher ticket programs. But for everybody on this team what I'll say is that um, you know they, they sh Carolina is a prime example of somebody who lost a ton of money by not going platinum. She passed up her commissions to um, Jonathan Budd, who actually wasn't platinum either, so they went directly to Matt. And he didn't have the deal you know, that, that we have with the affiliate program that was offered through the Mo Brain Trust. So Carolina, a big part of her story is the fact that she lost over twenty thousand dollars before she upgraded. I'm surprised she didn't lose. I think over time it'll wind up being quite a bit more than twenty thousand because she got a ton of people and she had about twenty. I think she had twenty-four license rights before she upgraded. So any of those people that that go platinum or titanium, she doesn't get any of it. And um, I did have a chance to talk to Matt and to and to uh, Max. That you know, Max is one of the main coaches. Michael Oliver and and TG are the three. I think the three leading high ticket coaches. But Max and Matt were together when I had this conversation, and basically they said, if you're putting somebody through MGTB that does not that you know you have a relationship with, and they have no way to upgrade to platinum or titanium. I mean, they, they have no way to upgrade to even to license rights. Then the sales team does not want to spend their time with those people. And Sam is on the line. Sam will be able to confirm this. But Max made it, you know, he was absolutely clear that they don't have time for that. So I said, so, you know, I have this affiliate program that I'm doing with a couple people. I know I've talked to 
couple of the other coaches and they said it, it was okay, I just want to make sure. And he said, yeah, absolutely. He said, if you can do something that will help those people, that would be great. That would be in Matt's best interest, that would be in Noah's best interest, but we, the coaches, top ticket, top tier coaches, we have too much on our plate to spend time putting those people through the 21 steps. So they're happy to open up the MTTB for your people if you say this person is not, you know, or they can say it themselves, they can say, look, I'm working with, uh, I'm working with Peter and he told me, you know, I'm going to be an affiliate under him and I just need to open up the 21 steps. Everybody in the organization pretty much understands that and is okay with that. And it ultimately will be a, a valuable asset to uh, MOBE. So I just want to clarify that. Um, plan for the week ahead. And that pretty much sum, sums it up. What I want to do in the next 24 hours is to have meetings for the different teams which we've never had before, make sure that we know who, who is a leader and you know up until now it was very freestyle but it's only been two weeks and we you know this event kind of got in the way so we're going to start doing the things that we should have done from the beginning and hopefully there won't be any sense of chaos after this week and if we can get everybody's answer that Alina was asking for yesterday if you can get that to me in the next few hours then we can actually start getting clicks tomorrow so the key the, the real question is how many uh, squeeze pages do we need to build and how many autoresponder sequences need work and as soon as we know that then we can get going. We already have the Goliath clicks paid for and actually paid for them about a week ago so they're about ready to deliver them as soon as we give them the links. Um, as far as the, the, David, the David clicks, they're very easy to line up in a day or, or less so I'm just waiting to set up the rotators with all of this information before we go out and start buying those clicks. Yes. Uh, Rob, yeah. can I make a suggestion that you appoint a temporary chairman for each group so that someone can actually call a meeting? Because otherwise, except for a couple of groups, we have other groups not functioning at all because no one's the leader. All right, let's take a quick look. These are the groups. So these two groups right now have one uh, Skype page and, you know, it's really the only groups that were active. These two, um, and I guess this one, was were the ones that were active during the event. So right now, um, you know, Regina and I have been talking. I don't know um, if she still wants to be in this role, but... We can talk about that later, but this is a very solid group right here, and I will call a meeting for this group uh, as soon as this meeting ends. I'll, I'll set up a time for this group to meet tonight. If anybody has uh, any times, anybody that's on this list has any times that are particularly good or bad, let me know. Let me take a quick look at who's here. Tim, Vergen, Sam. Rob Harris, me, Regina, Raina Lynn, Jeff, Fabiana, Alina, Eileen, Debra, Clinton, Cindy, Charlie. That is a power team. So, I mean, it's, if there's not much that we're going to do together besides just talk about priorities and delegate and then we'll get back together again because, you know, the point that's been made in these chat rooms uh, in the Skype room is, is something that I'm also very aware of and you know I don't like meetings, I've said that before, I've said that at the beginning of our meetings, I don't like to drag out meetings or to waste people's time. So the main purpose of meetings like this is number one communication, number two is action items you know for the next meeting and then we go off and do things and then we've had these other style of quote unquote meetings but to me they've been you know, I've even said several times that it's more like we have this virtual conference room and we're just hanging out. That is not a meeting that has a beginning and an end and that, that you expect to be making group decisions and it's really just kind of sitting at office, sitting at desks next to each other and sharing ideas 
and most of that time has been productive. Some of it's been really productive in terms of work. Some of it's been really helpful in terms of relationship building. You know, at the end of the day, no like and trust. It's not just customers. We've got 25 people here that don't know each other that well. So having that opportunity has been huge for those that have taken advantage of it. Regina and I are talking privately and she's only she only quit because she doesn't want to damage my my relationship with her and I told her that that's not an issue and so she's at least listening in and she's very welcome to participate at whatever level that she wants so I invited her in the first place because I've known her for a while and I know her personality I don't have an issue with her directness so <laughs> I can unmute you if you'd like. All right. So anyway, um, getting back, sorry, getting back to the, the rest of this. So I'll call a meeting for this group, the solo ads. Let's see. Alina, Raina Lynn, me, Sam, and Tim. So um, I think that that I also, at this point, I will also call a meeting of this team, the free traffic. Clinton and I have been talking about it. Clinton, I would like for Clinton. Are you on here? Clinton, yeah. Clinton, I'd like for you to be the leader, but I will call a meeting for this group because we've been talking about doing it anyway. Social media marketing. That's okay, Cindy. Rob. Cindy. Ro yes. Rob. Okay, we're 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 going to end up with the same problem we had with the. We didn't have a problem. The problem right. was that I did not call meetings and nobody else did. Now I said that I'm going to call the meeting. So if you have a problem with that, you're welcome to take any any one of these. You want to take these two right now? This Listen, you can call this Rob, meeting. Rob, cool down. Look, I'm not I'm an cool expert. All right, I'm not an expert in any of that stuff. But you can't be responsible. This has nothing to do with expertise. This has to do with calling a meeting. That's all. Uh, do you want to listen or not? Absolutely. Okay. It can't be all you. If this is a group, we need to have individual leaders that are willing to step up and call the meeting and organize it and report back. And if you keep doing everything, it will inhibit our ability to move forward. We'll move forward, but we won't move forward as well as we could have. And you're going to wear yourself out anyway. Okay. So I've been open to volunteers so far. I haven't had any. So what I was thinking is that in this first meeting, we would actually figure that out. But if somebody would like to, if you want me to appoint somebody on each of these, we can do that. So how about Charlie? call the meeting for this group and coordinate with Regina who may who definitely I would like to be there when we talk about media buying actually it's really two separate things media buying is is a separate group so I'll work with Regina and see if she wants to keep in that role and if so you know we'll call that meeting Charlie you can call this meeting please Cindy social media marketing uh, Clinton, the free traffic, and Rob Harris, live events. Um, the tech team, Sam, you're here, right? Somebody's the leader. Boyan, yeah, Boyan, I'm not sure if Boyan's back yet, but I think he's probably back. So we'll make sure that that one gets going. Creative team, Let's see who we have. We pointed yet. Alina. Alina is a good one for that one. Top tier sales team. Sam. I don't want you to have to be the leader of two, so. Oh yeah, so Boyan's that one and Sam's this one. Perfect. Co-op management team. Brain trust management team will be me for now. And what else? That's it. How's that? Okay, there's a question from Sam. He wants 
he wants to know what's the difference between media buying and CPA. He's in talks with various reps about advertising on high traffic sites. That's what this is, CPA. Well, the CPA is cost per action, so CPA, you're talking about banner advertising. Uh, that would be media buying. Anything that is any type of advertising on websites is and text ads that all goes into media buying, but that's different than what Site Scout does. I mean, Site Scout might incorporate some of it. Yeah, me, yeah. So it is. It's all media buying. Anything that is not a solo ad, that's not social media, um, that's not. And there's these free traffic, which is a little bit of overlap. On the free traffic, we definitely want to be using the traffic exchanges. And on the traffic exchanges, you can have banners. But so it's kind of the same idea, but it is a different resource, and we want to tap into that. Okay. So we have leaders, and I would like for all of you to please call a meeting in the next 24 hours. And I do appreciate your your direction, Jeff. I'm you know I was never hoarding power. It's I was looking for people to just jump in, but they haven't. So let's see. Yeah, the free method. I'm going to talk about this in a second. Follow-ups. Any so the follow-ups are uh, for sure following up from the Home Business Summit is huge, and then getting our co-op quicks going is huge. Um, other follow-ups. If anybody has any, obviously we're going to be meeting. You know, these different teams are going to be meeting, and so there will be follow-ups coming out of each of those. But I'm not sure. If we missed anything besides this free method, which I'll talk about. Time for next meeting. I think we can meet as a team again on uh, on Sunday at either this time, the same time, 4 p.m. Pacific, or we could do any time later than that, 9 p.m., 6 p.m. Pacific. How does that work, Sam, for you? 9 a.m. your time, I think. Why don't we decide on the time in the Skype room because I do want to accommodate Sam's flexible. There's actually Dory over in, in Australia, maybe one of the least flexible. So let's see if we can find out what time she can be there and be cognizant of Fabiana's schedule, which is hard to predict since she seems to be up all night anyway. But All right. So for those of you who are still here, I'm going to talk about these three little secrets that I got out of this weekend. When is the supercharge seminar? Oh, yeah, the supercharge seminar is the weekend of the 12th and 13th of December. And I don't know if there's a sales page for it yet. Let me take a quick look and see if it's been added. And I'm not sure if this is strategic that he waits until one is over before he announces the other, but while the home business summit focuses on getting people to go in at the license rights level, the supercharge seminar is for people who are at license rights to upgrade, although that certainly was the outcome at this event as well. So it doesn't look like the supercharge seminar page is up yet, but it should be up in the next couple of days. Good idea. Where is it? Where is it? It's in Scottsdale, Arizona. Oh, at Scottsdale, Arizona at a resort. It's supposed to be a beautiful place. I don't know anything more than that yet. Okay. All right. So any other questions before I stop the recording and share my secret information? All right. So thank you, everybody, for being here. It's, uh, it's just, almost, just over an hour from the time that we were supposed to start and almost exactly an hour from the time that we did start. Thank you for being here. And for those of you who want to stick around, we'll go through this little secret information. Talk to you all soon. Bye-bye.